world. This is Heather Diogracia. This is my first episode about sketching. First, I'm gonna teach you how to do sketching art. Then I'm going to introduce my guest star. Her name is Elise Noble, and we've known each other about 10 years. The last thing we're gonna study or draw pictures of is from Leonardo da Vinci who is a Renaissance Italian artist that lived many 500 years ago. And we are going to take some tips and lessons that he has done over the years. Hello, this is my bestest art girlfriend. Her name is Elise Noble. She actually studied at Central Michigan University for a degree in interior design. Currently, she works for Creative 360 as the senior artist, instructor, and she also teaches at Midland Center for the Arts and Studio 23 in Bay City. Today, she said that she would sketch with me and we are gonna teach you the basics about the shapes and form and easiness of sketching. The first thing we're gonna learn about the basics of sketching are the three primary shapes. First, we have the circle. Second, we have the square. And last, we have the triangle. If you are ready to be challenged, we are going to do a more 3D version of these simple sh shapes. First, we have a sphere, which is a round version of a circle. So draw a circle. Draw a little highlight on the upper left, which is a white area. It's an oval on the top left of the circle. Then you're going to do a little bit of shadowing opposite that on the bottom of the circle. The next we're going to do the cube. So draw a square Draw another square closely by it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna bring lines to all the points of the two squares. The triangle is going to be something called a vanishing point. So you're going to draw a triangle and you're going to reach out to a point on your paper and you're gonna draw all the edges going to one dot on the paper. These are the basic 2D and 3D shapes of sketching. The next thing we're gonna learn is something called a contour line, which is the outline of an object. So today we are going to draw something very special. We are gonna draw a fork. <laughs> so Elise, why don't you take what a shape of a fork would look like if you went down to the bare minimum? Well, what's funny is the idea of the fork always reminds me of the little mermaid when she's trying to comb her hair with a fork in the Disney movie. And similar <laughs> to mermaids, um, you can think of tridents, and that's kind of what a fork looks like. So I just have a really long rectangular part, maybe a little rounded on top, depending on the type of fork. And then I'm drawing another wider rectangle down at the bottom. So right now, it really just kind of looks like a shovel, but then we can round out the sides of that rectangle and add the individual spokes of the fork. It's a lot easier as 
you were saying, to start with these basic geometric shapes, even when you're drawing something more detailed. I did mine the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to teach you how to do a bunny rabbit. So what we're gonna start with is the basic shapes of the bunny. We're gonna draw a circle for the head of the bunny. And we're going to draw a rectangle for the body of the bunny rabbit. Elise, what would you suggest for the ears? What shape would you yeah, use? For the ears, I would just draw some simple ovals. Mm -hmm. Again, just working with those really basic shapes to break it down and make it a little bit easier. What would you recommend for the face? So for the face, I would put two circles next to each other, kind of near the bottom for the cheeks and then in the middle of those up top, we could put a little triangle for the nose and you can already see that it's starting to look like something recognizable. Do you like mine? I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for the arms and the legs, we'll probably do like a rectangle, make it really simple. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and draw triangle for the arms. Triangles for the other part of the arms. And let's draw two legs that are just sticking out. Now what I would like to do is see how you guys do your art. We have a Gmail email called artsmarttelevision at gmail.com. Feel free to drop by your ideas and your reference to sketching, and we might present it on a future episode of MCTV. It's time now for question and answers with my guest star, Elise Noble. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first one is, what is your definition of pencil sketching? To me, pencil sketching is where you're just starting with your rough outline, similar to what we just did, so all the detail isn't necessarily there yet. It's kind of like a map for what you wanna create. Very cool. What should a beginner of drawing practice with this technique? I think for a beginner of drawing, breaking everything down into simple shapes like we showed is really the easiest way to begin. And then they can add more details from there, but again, they have a framework and a direction for where they're going. And I'd also tell beginners to just make sure that you sketch for a little bit every day because practice really is what helps, even if you just have five minutes. That's funny you say practice. <laughs> That's part of our, our logo or oh, motto. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's gonna be practice create and finalize. That's great, I love it. Do you it. agree with that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Do you make thumbnail sketches and can you explain why? I do often start by making thumbnail sketches when I'm planning a composition, whether it's mixed media, painting, or drawing. And I think this is really helpful because it's, again, another map to lay out your elements and decide what arrangement of the different parts you want in your piece is going to be the most successful in the end. And it really helps you from wasting a lot of paper or canvases or materials from starting something and then maybe running out of space for everything you want to include or not liking the arrangement. So it really helps prevent a lot of frustration. Do you remember the art competition that we did and it was against like probably 50 people yeah and you did something which created a background a mid-ground and a foreground mm -hmm. can you describe maybe how sketching would help you with that sketching definitely helps with that so that you know the order to add in all your elements especially with that piece that was more watercolor based that I did if you don't have everything planned out with watercolors since they're transparent 
you can't easily cover up something in the background by layering over it. You're still going to see it. So that's where planning really helps. And I think you sold the piece, right? I did. It, it was, was really $4, exciting. $4,000. Oh, I you wish. Know. Not quite that much. <laughs> How long have you been a professional artist for? I've been a professional artist for probably around the last 10 years, I'd say. I've always loved art ever since I was growing up, but within the last 10 years, I've made art my career path, mainly through teaching. Yeah. You also like to draw as a kid. Yes, You spent always. hours drawing storylines and having fun as a kid. Yes, definitely. That was my favorite thing to do. Yes. What type of music inspires you when you're doing your drawings and your sketching? For me, really, I like all different varieties of music, so it really depends on my mood. Sometimes I do more classical instrumental stuff, which is really common for while you're doing art. Other times I have really loud, intense music or sometimes something in between. You and like heavy metal, right? I do sometimes, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you enjoy instructing, and what is your favorite subject? I do love teaching, and as I mentioned, that's really the main, one of the main components of my art career. I also do some selling art online and things, but I really love teaching because you're able to connect with other creative people. And one of my favorite things about teaching is kind of opening people up to the fact that they can be an artist and opening up that untapped potential. And do I you, Do you ever have that where they have a twinkle in their eye? Yeah. Where they're like, yes, I finally did something <laughs> yes. I'm proud of. Yes, and that is one of the most exciting things. And I love teaching classes that are more explorative, that let people experiment. I mean, it's definitely important to learn the foundations, like the sketching that we're talking about today. But then once you have that down, you can kind of go further and start telling a story with your art mm -hmm. and using it as a form of communication. And that's something I really love teaching people how to do. Great. I'm so glad you came on the show today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you inviting so me. so much. I really enjoy your art. I think you're a great instructor. And I wish you the best in the future. Thank you. You as well. Okay. Today I'm going to teach you some tips from our favorite Italian artist, Leonardo da Vinci. He did his artwork about 500 years ago, but we're still learning that his inventions and how he portrays the human body is still ahead of its time. We have here a woman sitting down, and if you can spot, he doesn't use dark lines that often except for features of the face. Here we see lines for the neck, the side of his, the face, the eyes, the nose, and the lips. He pretty much exaggerates everything that he draws. He has sketchbooks after sketchbooks of observations from real humans. The second tip today is using 50-50 observation. What you do is you look at the object 50% of the time and you draw 50% of the time. What we need to learn from sketching is a rough draft. This isn't a finished piece, this is just red. I think he used wax, red wax or red um, chalk to actually design it first and then to go back and paint over it. The third thing we're going to learn today is dark values and sharp lines sparingly. As you can see in this picture, he uses the white space to give it a soft, natural feel. You can see the black only in the eyes, the shadows of the nose, and here on the corner of the lips. Everything else is just soft. So he uses usually beige paper or some kind of off color than just white so he can fill it in using pure white or a little bit of red um, details. This is a wonderful picture of the way he can turn the objects of hands into it looks like they're in action or they're holding a pose. 
I think his best drawings is when he observes a human and he exaggerates movement. So it looks like she's here and here, but it looks like she's just holding it for a moment in time, like it's a memory. Number four is he exaggerates people's details. Like this man, he looks like an older gentleman, but he puts the nose really deep or he puts the chin very forward. He's able to catch a portrait and I hope with your sketching lessons that you're learning today that you can just take lines and softly put it in where it needs to be shadowed. Thanks for learning about Leonardo da Vinci today. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have had so much fun teaching you how to draw just the simple sh shapes. And also I would like to thank my guest star, Elise Noble. She is fabulous to work with and she's been a true friend of mine and I hope that we both taught you something today. I am going to give you our email address for future times in these episodes of Art Smart. It's art smart television at gmail.com. Thank you, MCTV, for allowing me to educate and instruct some new materials for people in Midland, Michigan.